Hello everyone and welcome. This is our video that gives you some new information about the new data release for Next Steps Age 32. My name is Morag Henderson, I'm the director of the Next Steps study and today you're going to hear some presentations from Dr Alison Wu Fang Wei, who's the Next Steps study researcher, Dr Liam Wright, the lecturer in statistics here at the Centre for Longitudinal Studies and you'll see some slides from Sarah Brihal, the Next Steps data manager. This webinar, or this video rather, introduces Next Steps, which was formerly known as the Longitudinal Study of Young People in England, to both first time and more experienced users, focusing on the newly available data from the Age 32 survey. But we will also pick up on some of the longitudinal dimensions of the data set. The Next Steps Age 32 sweep is now available at the UK D Data Service, and we'll give you more information about how to access that data throughout today's video. So just a quick outline, I'm briefly going to introduce you to the Centre for Longitudinal Studies and the other data sets we house here. I'm going to give you an overview of next steps and then I'll hand over to Alison who's going to take you through the age 32 survey contents before Liam will then talk about the sample design, attrition and weights. Uh, lastly, I'll finish off this video with a uh, discussion about the data structure, documentation and accessing the data. So just briefly to say a little bit about the Centre for Longitudinal Studies, um, because it's useful for thinking about some cross cohort comparisons. CLS is home to four national longitudinal cohort studies, which follow the lives of tens of thousands of people. Um, each of our four studies follow large nationally representative groups of people born in a given year. And by collecting information from the same people over time, we have this incredibly rich resource that allows us to answer important research questions. So here are the four studies. Um, there's the 1958 National Child Development Study who were born in Great Britain in the same week uh, and the initial sample was around seven and a, 17 and a half thousand people. There's the 1970 BCS or British Cohort Study again born in the same week in Great Britain and there's around 17,000 participants. Next steps, obviously the feature for today and um, the uh, the, the fourth study we have here is the Millennium Cohort Study, born in the UK between the year 2000 and 2002, and there are around 19,000 participants. So next steps, our focus today fo uh, follows the lives of around 16,000 young people who were living in England, attending secondary school, and who were born across the years 1989 to 1990. Um, and uh, we have nine sweeps of data now. You can see that they're sort of clustered for next steps during adolescence. Um, but we also have a, a sweep of data from age 25 in early adulthood and following up with the most recent data sweep, um, age 32. The thing that makes Next Steps distinct from the other three cohorts we have at CLS is that the others are following um, the cohort members from birth. Um, so we see that they, there's age sort of spaced throughout the whole of um, the life course. Um, and so Next Steps has some challenges in filling in that gap between birth to adolescence, but we have tried to address that in this most recent sweep by including some retrospective measures of childhood experiences. So let me say a little bit more about Next Steps. It's got its sort of unusual heritage. Um, it was initially run by the Department for Education and it had a strong focus on educational transitions and transitions into the labour market. Um, it began in 2004 when they were aged 13 or 14 and in year nine at school. And like you saw on that graph, they were surveyed annually. So they were clustered in adolescence from age 13 or 14 up until age 20. So they were looking at those transitions throughout schooling. And then um, we went back to them at age 25 and again at age 32. In addition to those main sweeps, we have three COVID-19 special sweeps that were harmonised across the four cohort studies held here at CLS. And in addition to that, the NSHD data set that's held also by UCL. And that allows for some harmonised work that looks at how uh, people experience the COVID-19 crisis and allows us to look at those um, experiences prospectively. As I've said, the age 32 data is now available on the UK data service, and I'll say a little bit more about accessing that later. Um, the data collection took place during the cost of living crisis, so between April 2022 and September 2023, and that makes a really interesting time to capture the experiences of this particular generation. Um, the age 32 suite continues to focus on some um, um, education and labour market transitions, but from age 25 onwards and, and including age 32, it's 
started to think more multidisciplinary and, and has gained more similarities to the other CLS cohort studies to capture uh, multiple dimensions in, on health, for example, well-being um, and, and other uh, experiences. We know from uh, research that adulthood trajectories are more diverse than ever, so the age 32 sweep allows us to document these trajectories. M many of our cohort members may be becoming parents, um, they may be taking on more responsibilities, becoming um, more stable in their career or saving for a house, and they may also have developed more uh, sort of resilient or stronger coping strategies. So it becomes a really interesting age to, to study. And what's unique about this generation is that it's a missing cohort that basically fills in the gap between BCS 70 and the Millennium Cohort Study who were born in the year 2000. So we've got that slotted generation that captures this millennial generation. Um, and th this generation faced some unique challenges. They were one of the first to enter, th sorry, they were the, one of the first generations to face the highest uh, student debt. They entered the labour market during the Great Recession, which meant increased job precarity and er erosion of workplace rights. And they've encountered a really challenging housing market, among many other experiences. And so these pressures may shape their sort of unique outlook on life and, and tra adulthood transitions. Just to show you an overview of the study, um, as I said, we have this co sort of concentrated annual set of sweeps from age 14 to age 20, then a, a, an adulthood sweep when CLS picked up the study from the Department for Education um, at age 25, sorry, and then again at age 32. You'll see from this that we also have information from the parents for the first four sweeps, um, and we have linked the Next Steps data to a number of different resources, including the National People Database, the Individualised Learning Record, Hospital Episode Statistics from the NHS, and the Student Loans Company data. And we'll soon be um, linking, updating our linked data based on the consents from the age 32 sweeps soon. I'll say a little bit more about that. You'll see the response rates um, along uh, the bottom and the, the sample size. Um, at the age 32, there were 2000, sorry, 7,284 people who took part in the survey. Since then, five people post data collection has asked for their data to be deleted. So although we have the official response rate of 7284, the actual N in the data is 7279, but the response rate because of rounding remains are about 53% relative to the issued sample. So here I mentioned the linked data, that's the data that are currently available um, to, for researchers. And just to say that we included a, a, a large sweep of data consents. So participants completed their, agreed to consent to the, the data linkage across these four domains and education, health, economic and crime. Um, at, at CLS, we're still seeking agreement from the data holders and onward sharing agreements to make the, that data available as soon as we can. But I just want to, to flag that as another resource. So that's all from me from now. I'm going to hand over next to Alison, who's going to take you through some of the age 32 survey contents, in addition to some of the longitudinal uh, aspects of the data.